the web page that we use will have uh, the new when you see the webinar it'll actually have the uh, uh, the web the, the the order form right there next to it now this is just going to be quick because we got to get to the other thing here but the skin is a sensory organ I want you to think about it differently and hopefully these pictures will help you but this is a uh, Nolano in, in Naples and uh, she's done some great work this is a fluorescent picture of the skin well, we don't get these but we get something like this and you can see the little nerves in here you know that's what we're looking at that's what they're counting and then the corpuscles and the sweat glands this is probably a sweat gland down there this is how I want to describe it to you it, this is this is a very important slide and it's going to help you with your report okay and I tell the patients these right here are the small fibers that we're looking at okay they're up into your skin okay and you can see the little stems and the little things up there and that's how you sense the world okay like a dandelion and when the dandelion gets blown on I don't know if I put this out there then all you get is this stump now these nerves out here when they're gone are dead okay they're not there anymore but this is sitting here the stem is still alive while these are dead damaged and pruned back the stem is still alive and it's swimming in a neuroinflammatory soup that's why you can have sensory loss but still have pain because the stem is still alive and what we're going to do when we do the biopsy is we're going to count how many of these small fibers did you do have left in your skin and this is what we do. We help regenerate and regrow and make these nerves work better and reduce the, the inflammatory soup with our nutritional support. Okay, the skin is an efficient barrier which protects our bodies from external stimuli, but it's an important site for perception of various stimuli. Sensory neurons in the peripheral nervous system send primary afferent fibers to the skin. They pass through the dermis and these nerve fibers clearly involved in somatic sensation. But, 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 but it does so much more, okay? Here's those beautiful nerves coming up through the skin. Again, this is a fluorescent dye. This is the, the pictures that we get looking at the nerves coming up through the skin. Isn't that beautiful? This is what you have to know. They're like the fine little hairs of a dandelion. And then these are little corpuscles. I'm just showing you beautiful pictures. You do this biopsy in the calf and the thigh. They're beautiful, aren't they? In normal people now when you give hot peppers you have a selective loss of nociceptors okay so here's what you say you give the here's a normal patient okay you give them a little bit of capsaicin or that uh, the hot pepper on their skin right you give them a little bit more you give them a little bit more and look at it does excitotoxicity it takes away all the nerves excitotoxicity will reduce the nerves and then what happens is in normal patients these tend to regenerate and grow back after about four weeks okay but if you look at abnormal patients uh, uh, they like diabetics they don't grow back okay and when you do testing of and of epidermal nerve fibers during and after capsaicin the light touch is not does not change okay so if I give you capsaicin, I'm going to take away, I'm going to destroy your nerves. They're not going to be there. And what happens? Heat sensation goes right into the tubes. Cold sensation is mildly reduced. Pinprick is mildly reduced. Okay? And skin fiber densities go right into the toilet. So let's look at this again. Heat is the most affected. As the nerve fiber densities go down, it goes right down with heat. Is that cool or what? And touch is not affected because they're deeper tissues. Influence of thermal side for detecting heat pain dysfunction in a capsaicin model of intraepidermal nerve fiber loss. Capsaicin produces a rapid decrease in the number of epidermal nerve fibers with a complete disappearance after three days after treatment. Heat pain evoked by small thermos decreased dramatically after capsaicin treatment, but that's with a small one, not a large one. 
Heat pain sensation evoked by the small thermal correlated much better with the number of nerve fibers than heat pain sensation evoked by large thermals. That's pretty cool. So when you look at nerve fiber density and quantitative sensory testing, warm and heat pain thresholds are the most affected. Both cold and warm heat detection thresholds are attention. Cold threshold is detected, and heat and cold detection is reduced. So nerve fiber density correlates with quantitative sensory testing, and that's what we're doing. Correlation with specific sensory modalities, cooling, warm, and heat pain remains completely uncertain, but, you know, they're going to do these things. But does the loss of epidermal nerve fibers equal pain? This is the bugaboo. Well, painful neuropathies show a loss of intraepidermal nerve fibers, okay? But as we said in last month's uh, webinar, it goes into the brain. It's like a pinball machine, okay? So this is what they're finding. These are the things, and we're going to talk about Oaklander's work uh, next month, okay? So density is lower in diabetic neuropathy patients with pain compared to those without pain. So the nerve fiber density inversely correlates with pain severity in HIV-associated neuropathies. In pain patients with pure small fiber neuropathy, the density is lower in those patients with pure spontaneous pain those with, than with those with evoked pain. But it did not correlate with the intensity. This was a big, big boo-boo, you know. But, okay, reduction of pain parallels the increase in intraepidural fiber densities during the improvement of neuropathy. Woohoo! And this is our friend, Dr. Smith, Gordon Smith from Utah. I say friend, uh, I got my picture taken with him, but he was looking like he was uh, trying to hold in a, a massive bowel movement. Uh, painful neuropathy in some clinical hypothyroidism. This again showed that as the nerves grew back, the pain went down. Again, we this is one of the case reports of regeneration. The relationship between density and neuropathic pain is complex. Increased in density can induce improvement of pain. Lower densities may be associated with the presence of neuropathic pain, but it does not correlate with the intensity of the pain because that's a very personal thing. The distal degeneration of seed fibers induces multiple events, including increased ectopic in spontaneous firing of primary afferents. That's called the, the neuroinflammatory soup. Okay, transmission of painful signals along large myelinated nerves that does not normally transmit pain, perhaps. Neurochemical and structural changes in the dorsal root ganglion and the dorsal horn of the spinal cord, and altered brain processing and inhibition of painful sensation, all the things that we talk about. Just call that a neuroinflammatory soup. Inflammatory mediators through the activation of uh, resident immuno cells can play a role in sensitizing the C fibers and inducing spontaneous discharge. Now we know that's definitely going to be a part of it. Okay, and macrophage derived nerve growth factor induces mast cell degranulation with the release of prostaglandins, bradykinins, histamines, and serotonins. And this is where we're going to have to attack our chronic pain patients, our burning pain patients, our central pain patients by reducing the neuroinflammatory soup, as well as helping the nerves. Uh, so here you can see the degeneration, okay, of these people. I'm just showing these nerves here. Uh, but the occurrence of reduced density in Meisner's corpuscles in patients with sensory neuropathy, okay? So Meisner's corpuscles, which are the, the other ones, they... Uh, they had an increased occurrence of the loss of uh, densities, but the Meisner's corpuscles really didn't really change too much. Again, more beautiful pictures of the skin. And this is a sensory, de sensory deficits in Parkinson's disease, and it, re it comes to a cutaneous denervation. So, you know, Parkinson's disease, how does it affect the feet? Well, Parkinson's disease affects the brain. And most likely what you're going to find in Parkinson's disease is a mitochondrial disease. It's mitochondrionopathy, and that is what the nerves really run on. It's the first place that you're going to see damage in the brain is in the skin. 
So cutaneous innervations role in neuropathic pain. Okay, C fibers, A deltas, which they didn't talk about, the, a, the C fiber and the A beta interaction, which is a big deal that the, they talk about, which uh, and, and these things. So skin biopsy is a window of the peripheral nervous system that allows exoration of uh, the last endings of unmyelinated and, and myelinated fibers. Better assessment of C fibers and A beta, well, forget about A delta, give more insights. And the correlation with sensory function requires appropriate tools like heat pain testing. Okay, where's my seminar thing here? What the heck? Any questions on that? That was pretty cool. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Comments? All right, let's do the good thing now.